Loli soi fua ma ni langi mama o te faatalo faatu le swafa fa iyo Yesu ke riso tatu ali faola Manuele vayaso le ngana fa samor New Zealand ile tau sanga lua fi ma lulus kulu lua fa tai tele lau ma lava noa Hey family, uh, in this short video for Samoan Language Week 2022, uh, the Fresh Truth Ministries Ainga wanted to look at this topic of how the gospel came to Samoa. Uh, my name is Ronji Tanielu. I'm one of the Fresh Truth brothers. Uh, in this short video, we're asking you to check out the story of Christianity and the gospel coming to Samoa. <laughs> How did this Christian gospel message get all the way to Samoa? To try and answer that question, we need to do some time travel going backwards. The London Missionary Society, or LMS, was established in 1795 to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the world. LMS sent missionaries to Tahiti and the Cook Islands from 1796 onwards. God did some amazing work in these islands with many locals coming to faith in Jesus Christ, including Papeha from Tahiti, who ended up working with LMS missionary teams from overseas. In 1817, a missionary couple named John and Mary Williams from the United Kingdom traveled to the Pacific to continue the work of the LMS in the area. John and the LMS team used locals who had come to faith in Christ to travel to other parts of the Pacific to share this gospel message. In 1830, John and Mary and their crew landed in Samoa and were considered by many to be the first Christian missionaries into Samoa. Many people don't know this, but part of John's crew in 1830 was a Samoan couple named Bawea and his wife Bose Se, who had become Christians but were living in Tonga. This couple became a massive blessing to the team as they were able to communicate the gospel and biblical truths in the Samoan language to their own people. The missionary team landed in Sapapali in Savai to bring the Christian message to Samoa. Two years later, in 1832, John Williams and his team landed in Leone Bay, which would later become American Samoa, to continue spreading the gospel into the Samoan Islands. What was the impact of the Christian gospel message coming to Samoa? Well, in August of 1830, uh, Williams and the missionary team met with Malia Tua Wainu'upo in Sapapali. Malia Tua accepted the Christian message and allowed the LMS to establish their work in Samoa. For many years, there had been a famous prophecy from Nafanua, the famous Samoan goddess of war. And the prophecy said that there would be a new kingdom that would come from heaven that would come to Samoa. Historical records show that within a few years, nearly all of Samoa had converted to Christianity. It's like there was a massive spiritual revival happening in Samoa. When Williams and the team landed in American Samoa in 1832, they found that many locals had already accepted Christianity. The Congregational Christian Church of Samoa, which was also known as Epakasa or Lokukaiki or the LMS Church, is currently the largest Christian denomination in Samoa. All of those names reflect the history that this church has. The Congregational Christian Church trace their origins to the work of Williams and the LMS team from 1830 onwards. The impacts of Christianity were massive right across the islands of Samoa. One amazing impact was the huge numbers of Samoan people that had offered themselves for overseas mission work. In 1839, only nine years after the arrival of the LMS to Samoa, the first 12 Samoan missionaries left for mission work in Melanesia and other parts of the Pacific. My own uh, great-grandparents were part of this move as they left Manua Theological College and they traveled to uh, the islands of Tokelau to establish and help establish the Efakasa Church in Atahu in Tokelau. In 1855, the first translation of the Holy Bible, or Tusipa'ia, into the Samoan language was made. 
these Christian roots run deep into Samoa. Even the Kalika or the shield of Samoa boldly states Samoa Fa'avai Ileatua, that the foundation of Samoa is God. What's the situation of Christianity in Samoa today? Well, since that rich history, things have changed massively for Christianity in Samoa or for Samoans in general. The religious picture is very diverse inside Samoa. In the 2016 census in Samoa, 29% of locals were part of the Congregational Church, 19% said that, said that they were Catholic, 17% Mormon, and 12% Methodist. The fastest growing religion in Samoa is other religion, which includes Baha'i, Islam, and atheism. But I want to note that there is a big difference between religion and true biblical Christianity. See, religion is where we try and earn our way into heaven and reach God through our good works and being good people and so on. See, the Bible does not teach that this is the way to salvation. On the other hand, true biblical Christianity is about God reaching us by sending his son, Jesus Christ, fully man and fully God, to save us from hell through his death, burial, and resurrection. That is the core of the gospel or the good news of Jesus Christ. Also, wherever Samoans have traveled around the world, New Zealand, Australia, the US, and so on, they have established churches, and Samoans are well known for being religious and church-going people. In Aotearoa, Samoans make up the largest proportion of Pacific people in the country. But the connection between Samoans and Christianity is changing very, very quickly. Between 2006 and 2018, the number of Samoans saying they're Christian, that they were Christians has declined massively. In that same time, the number of Samoans now claiming that they have no religion has increased massively. By 2018, 20% or one in every five Samoan people living in Aotearoa now claim no religion. This answer was most common among Samoan young people and young adults. And other big challenges exist affecting Christianity and Samoans in Aotearoa and overseas as well. These include the elevation of our Samoan culture over what the Bible actually says. Others also say that Christianity is a white man's religion and that we're just following a white Jesus and that Christianity was brought through the evils of colonialism. That's a lot of talk about, there's a lot of talk about deconstructing religion and returning to pre-colonial gods. We at Fresh Truth strongly disagree with these views and we're happy to discuss and debate this further. We love what a dear brother of ours, Pastor Cliff Wadsworth from Cornerstone Baptist in Otara, said about these issues. Check this out. There's no more indigenous than Jesus. He's yeah, as indigenous absolutely. as you get. He's a Jew. Absolutely. The Jewish people are the yeah. most indigenous people of Born any... Born as a Jew, lived as a Jew uh, uh, within that uh, whole ex context. Exactly. Yep. I mean, if there's Tangata Whenua, it's Jew. <laughs> very you know? good, very so, good. Um, I, I know he was brought here by the London Missionary <laughs> Society and the Anglicans and the Puritans and the, the rest of these different groups, but Jesus is not the white man's God. Yeah, Jesus is good. God who came in the flesh. And um, I think we'd be surprised and, you know, we all want to make... You know our our vision of Jesus, a certain color. Let's put away the color side of yeah, things because good, God though. doesn't see color. Very good. He sees people that need Christ, and He loved the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son. So I hear you, bro. Yeah, and yeah. I see that colonization and Christianity is all put into the same basket. It was all wrong. It's all bad. We need forget to forget it. We need to forget it. But that's not that's not wrong. Right. Going there, never back down. Well, family, this was a short video to celebrate Samoan Language Week from Fresh Truth Ministries. And throughout 2022, we want to look at, these, at this question of how the gospel came to our Pacific Islands. For us at Fresh Truth, our cultures and our families and our identity are important, and it's a part of who God made us. But these cultures, these ethnicities, these identities should always be superseded by God's word 
and our ultimate identity as born-again believers in Christ Jesus. The story of the gospel coming to Samoa is a powerful story, but also a pretty messy story as well. And this gospel story is being challenged and attacked here in Aotearoa and right across the world. Samoans are super well known for being church people, religious people. But we want to remind everyone that religion does not save us. Sitting inside McDonald's does not make me a hamburger. And if I sit inside a church, that does not get me to heaven. I must be born again by the Spirit of God, acknowledging my sin before a holy God and the grace and mercy and forgiveness and redemption that is found in the person of Christ. See, family, for us, what is absolutely crucial in all of this is the story of Jesus Christ. And I end with Jesus' own words from John chapter 14, verse 6. And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So fast, we